The Wrightsville Dam, which sits just north of Mount Pelier, is near maximum capacity. And if water starts overflowing the dam, then a large amount of water would add to the problem. Fox Weathers Ian Oliver is in Vermont where residents say they really felt off guard and seeing where you're at here, boy, oh boy, I mean, that water is at least up to your ankles there, Ian. Michael, and it gets a whole lot deeper. This is Main Street in Montpelier, Vermont. As you move down Main Street, that is uh, the town hall off in the distance there. And what you can see behind me, they just launched a couple of folks in a canoe. That has been the scene uh, throughout the morning hours, folks moving about in canoes, kayaks. We've seen stand-up paddle boards going down uh, Main Street. In addition to the Colchester Fire Rescue, just from up the way, up Interstate 89, just a touch, which has reopened, thankfully, within the last couple of hours in both directions, north and south of Montpelier. They're down to help. They deployed an inflatable uh, vehicle. In fact, they have not returned in that Yes, they have. Okay, so they have that back on the trailer. But what they've been doing is basically surveying the damage up and down uh, Main Street because of, of what we've seen. This event, which has become historic, trailing only the Great Vermont Flood of 1927, we saw the Winooski River at Montpelier crest, which it, we have thankfully seen waters drop back. We'll talk about how much in just a second. But it crested at almost 21 and a half feet. That's good for two and a half feet almost in excess of the levels that we saw back during Tropical Storm Irene. That was a dozen years ago back in 2011. And that is really the storm of reference for that region, for this region. It, I went through it together. I was living and working here in Vermont at Channel 3 News in Burlington. And that was a, a devastating event that it took years for the state to, to bounce back from. And now here we are in a storm system that doesn't have a name. It wasn't of a tropical nature, even though it was tropical moisture that fueled this incredible amount of rain, five to eight inches in the beautiful Green Mountain State. But unfortunately, those mountains, 4,000 up to almost 4,400 feet, Mount Mansfield, Vermont's tallest mountain. I do want to talk about the improvements that we've seen here. Just in the last hour, it's become more apparent. That Ford Focus off in the distance that you can see here, and we're going to uh, take a peek down Main Street so you can see that. Town Hall, folks on a canoe off in the distance. That Ford Focus, when we got here early this morning, about uh, 8 a.m. or so, and we were finally able to make it into Montpelier with the amount of roads closed across the state of Vermont, that's the key here is that this is this is not a Montpelier event. This is an entire state of Vermont event, but they are scenes that look like this. The Ford Focus, the water was up well up over the trunk. Now you see it. It's below the license plate. It's down to the rear bumper. So that is dropped call it about a foot and a half, two feet maybe. We could only see the top of this trash can, which I'm not sure where it came from. The floodwaters had pushed this out into the middle of Main Street. We could only see the very top of that lid. So that gives you kind of a, a good sense of how much the water has dropped. It's about two feet. There's a drone uh, flying by as well, taking a look at the scene here on Main Street. Michael, you mentioned the Wrightsville Dam, and that's been the talker here of great concern over the last several hours. Earlier, we got that update. They said there was about six feet of play before the water was gonna approach the spillway of Wrightsville Dam. We got an update from the county at about 11.30 a.m. They said it's now just about a foot. So the issue here is there's, there's some give and take happening. You've got the spillway. That was built in response to the Great Vermont flood of 1927. It was completed in 1935. It's never been tested like this, not even during Tropical Storm Irene, it, it was never this close to actually having to release water from that reservoir. If it has to, which that water has unfortunately still been rising, it's about three and a half miles up the way here, three and a half miles north of Montpelier. The North Fork of the Winooski River is about 3,000 feet off to my right. That's where the two rivers meet, the North Fork and the Winooski proper the water would have to rush down. It would likely be beyond here, but that's where the concern, Michael, is that we could see renewed flooding concerns and maybe a reversal in what has been dropping water levels. I'm, I'm sure you can hear it. Uh, the Colchester Technical mm -hmm. Rescue Team, it does look like they're about to uh, deploy the inflatables once again. So we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, they had previously gone out and, and done uh, a mission probably about a hour and a half back, should point that out, fantastic work to Vermont's first responders. Up over 110 water rescues have been performed. No injuries and no fatalities, thankfully, 
somehow with these scenes that we have seen. It, it feels like a miracle, and it is a fantastic one. They've done they've done great work, and uh, they continue to, Michael. Yeah, you know, Ian, as you just mentioned, it feels like it is an all-hands-on-deck there in Mount Pelier, Vermont. You know, you mentioned before that it's about, what, 12 inches or so away from the Wrightsville Dam actually cresting. If that is to happen, say, in the next day or so, is there any idea on what the water level would then look like in downtown where you're at if that crest does happen sooner than later? Well, it's hard to say, Michael, because it's never happened before mm -hmm. since they, they built this back in 1935, and they've been fairly honest with that. I don't think it would be over the next day or so. I think it would be over the next few hours into this afternoon. If we make it into the evening, I think we would start to see those levels dipping a bit, especially if we can see continued dry conditions like this. We had some rain that moved through early this morning, and that led to this secondary crest uh, beyond a touch beyond what was forecast because between about 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., heavy downpours worked on through. It was about an inch to an additional inch and a half of rain that fell, and that bumped these numbers up into that five to eight inch rain, which was well in excess, at least for here, what they saw back during Tropical Storm Irene. And, and there, is, there is, as you as you know, Michael, especially into uh, places like what we saw in eastern Kentucky, mm -hmm. There is uh, there's a local sense to this where the heaviest pockets of rain set up what the terrain was like in those specific areas. So some some folks might be saying, hey, I, thankfully, I made through this uh, nothing like what we saw during Irene, but some areas are faring far, far worse, Michael. Yeah. And, you know, Ian, the fact that there's more rain on the way, a couple of showers tomorrow, but really Thursday looking like another day that we could see more rain is going to add insult to injury. We are going to check back in with you in the capital city of Vermont in Mount Pelier in just a little bit. Ian, thank you so much. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.